out of here! How predictable. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our list for the top 10 cliches found in TV. We thought you were in Bear Mountain. Bear Mountain? Who told you that? Raymond. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're examining the cliches, tropes, and other recurring elements most prevalent in television. Uh, you don't believe me? Ask Jerry. I will. What do you mean you will? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's a bad idea. J Jerry's a very private person. I want to hear it from Jerry. <laughs> Number 10. All the drama. I will not let myself get that close to someone and lose them again. Few of our lives are as exciting or filled with as much conflict and strife as people on television. Each episode puts the show's characters through more stuff than most of us deal with in a year. This may seem par for the course, though. After all, TV is built on drama. Even so-called reality shows inject conflict to spice up their content and to create dramatic weight to ostensibly authentic events. Go out here and make a rape. There's a team, Victoria! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move it! What? There's a team! Nevertheless, overly dramatic situations are a cliché, meaning that audiences need to buy into an awful lot. Wouldn't it be nice to see more ordinary events reflected on screen? Oh, indeed. Number 9. The Hangout Spot hey, You'll never guess who left a message on my machine, the reporter from NYU. A lot of us have a place, like a restaurant or a bar, where we like to spend time with friends. But TV characters take it a step further, treating their hangout spots like their second homes. I grit log out school covers <laughs> and a brass rail. And a big city bartender with a joke at the ready. You from out of town? <laughs> the reason for this is usually the result of production necessities. While some shows can afford to show characters eating out in a new place every week, many cannot, so it's easier and more cost-effective to just have a few standing sets or locations for the characters to hang at. These hangouts are often iconic parts of their respective shows, though, so this is one cliché we're definitely willing to live with. Okay, thank you! <laughs> and, as always, no one talked to me after the show. <laughs> Number 8. Computer Exaggerations Magnify that death sphere. Why is it still blurry? That's all the resolution we have. Making it bigger doesn't make it clearer. It does on CSI Miami. Even in today's largely computer literate society, there are still things that we don't know about them. However, TV shows continually treat the machines like they're borderline magical, or at the very least capable of doing things that they can't do in real life. Cop shows and other procedurals are usually guiltiest of this cliche. Curtis is dialing a number, can you enhance it? See what I can do. Yeah, sorry, enhancing camera footage with no resolution drop is not feasible. Also, according to TV, hacking is something you can do in minutes flat, and never requires the use of a mouse. We're no experts, but even we're rolling our eyes at these errors. So this is one trope we'd love to see deleted. Isolate pocket contents. Enhance, 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 enhance. Meet me at the strip club tonight, it all goes down. XOXOVB. Number seven. Token Minorities. Now, this will be a group project, so I'm going to place you all into groups of five. Let's see. Uh, Wendy, Bebe, Clyde, Pip, and Token. You'll be group one. We've all seen this one before. In an attempt to seem relatable to every possible audience member, show producers will try to form a cast of specific ethnicities, genders, sexual orientations, or other defining features. The classic example is a largely white cast with a single or a few token ethnic minority characters. Come with us. No, it's okay. I don't have to go. I'm happy just to guide you and your ladies to suitable entertainment choices. I'm a walking brown yelp.com. <laughs> Some shows have wised up to the trope and will make self-aware comments or even flip the ratio to have a token white character. Other common setups include a token gay character or a token female if the cast is primarily male. Ultimately, it just comes across as disingenuous and pandering for the sake of it. Here's your surprise! No, no! So it'll go bluey right in your face! Number six. Will they, won't they? Let me finish, okay? She started kissing me and, and I didn't stop it. I guess I, I just wasn't thinking. Spoiler alert, they will. Television shows love to toy with the idea that maybe the love interest in programs won't end up together. There are obstacles thrown in to delay the inevitable, like ex-lovers, big arguments, or misunderstandings galore. But we all know that it'll happen at some point, give or take a character's death or the show's cancellation. It's gotten to the point where it would honestly be refreshing to see things not work out between those two crazy kids. After all, love doesn't always mean everyone stays together in reality. 
Still, we realize that TV is largely an escape from the real world, so it's understandable why this trope has remained popular. All this time, you remembered. Number five, struggling 20-somethings with huge apartments. Look around, you guys. This was your first home, and it was a happy place. Many sitcoms feature people with apartments or houses far larger than what people of their economic means would realistically be able to afford. There's a girl in there! I know! And a pineapple! I know! I mean, come on. It's not hard to figure out how expensive the cost of living would be in the major cities where the characters live. This discrepancy is rarely addressed in shows, leading the audience to suspend their disbelief. From a production standpoint, however, it makes sense. Filming in a larger space offers more opportunities for movement and greater variety of camera placement. So, despite not making much sense in the narrative, this cliche likely won't be disappearing anytime soon. But more important, because of rent control, it was a friggin' steal. <laughs> Number four, learning an important lesson in the end. Major John will not recover the use of his right arm for a year or more in your measure of time. Nothing rounds out a TV episode quite as tidily, or some might argue condescendingly, as a summation of what we're supposed to have learned from what we've just watched. This form of storytelling has been around for quite some time, and neither features a narrator summing up the message, or a character expressing, either aloud or in an inner monologue, what they, and therefore the audience, have taken away from the events they've experienced. But the truth is, the only reason everybody was keeping their secrets was because they didn't want to lose each other. The real world is rarely quite so easy to understand, but it's nice to imagine it is when you watch TV. Plus, some shows have gotten adept at parodying this practice, which can be pretty funny. Number three, catchphrases. In the case of television, writers will intentionally have a character repeat a phrase, hoping it will become associated with the person who says it, and even with the show as a whole. Thing is, catchphrases are a very delicate thing to play with. Sure, a line might get a laugh the first few times, but if used too liberally, it can become incredibly tiresome to hear every episode every time a character makes an appearance. Bazinga. Bazinga. Sometimes, though, it's music to our ears, and that's when you know you have something special. You can't really have TV without the catchphrases. This is my own private domicile, and I will not be harassed! Bitch! Number two, ugly guy, hot wife. Oh, it's when have we ever had trouble communicating? Oh, Peter, I love you. Yeah, about a quarter past five. She is way out of his league. Time and time again, TV has depicted less attractive men paired with more attractive female partners. The reverse, to be honest, is a rarity. It was a toss-up between this cliche and the dumb dad trope, but this one's annoying for both sexes. Isn't there anything we can do? The origin of this hotness disparity is possibly due to more men being in charge of casting roles for television, meaning they were more likely to cast attractive women. We're not saying this cliche doesn't happen in real life. It does, but TV portrays it happening far more than in reality. Hey, wanna have sex? <laughs> Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Call him up, tell him we'll meet him topside. No, thank you. Do it. No! Ah! You shot me. Damn right. Then why did you stay? That's none of your business. Oh, you got a secret agenda, huh? Well, if you're spying for Jack... I'm not spying for anyone. So why don't you tell because me... Because I don't trust you. He knows. Who's Thomas Merton? Who is he? He's the one thing you can never take from us. No. Wait! Number one, ending on a cliffhanger. Nothing is guaranteed to get an audience to throw their hands up and groan more than discovering they have to wait to find out how things turn out. Cliffhangers are the handiest weapon in a show's back pocket to keep people tuning in, whether it's for any old episode or a season finale. By leaving off on a moment of excitement or uncertainty, we're left waiting with bated breath until the next episode airs, which can sometimes be a painfully long time. Is it a little manipulative? Absolutely. But it works. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. As long as there's TV, there will probably be cliffhangers. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.